Hi and welcome to Allegro Enterprises. My name is Marco Sazana Rutuli. I'm the director of the organization and today I'm proud to host the Budget Buster mini-series for 2022-2023 fiscal year. My guest today is Mwendabai Kalaluka. Mwendabai is a leading business consultant, academic and managing consultant of the practice IABC here in Johannesburg. Hi Mwendabai, it's good to have you. Hi Marco Sazane, nice to be with you today. <laughs> Thank you for coming and for unpacking this budget with us. I'm really looking forward to this mini-series. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to move on to another incentive for corporates, which is in the Employment uh, Tax Incentive, the ETI. Yes. I'm curious, have you seen a big uptake of this incentive in business? Um, do people think it's worth it? Have they gone and actually uh, applied it? or? You know, it has a kind of fallen through the cracks a bit. What has been your experience? Um, I think like most incentives, um, what you find is there, there is quite um, a little bit of uh, reluctance in actually uh, taking most of these incentives up. And the main reason can be attributed to the uh, stringent compliance requirements for you to actually enjoy those incentives. So um, just as we get into that incentives uh, discussion, uh, just to give uh, kind of like uh, a background, that uh, this is something that has always been there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was introduced quite a while back uh, and obviously the objective of the ETI or Employee Tax Incentive is to uh, encourage businesses to uh, hire more young people. Uh, in, into the space. Uh, when COVID-19 and uh, the pandemic struck in 2020, uh, government actually extended this because it was due to end by then. So the mm. government extended it uh, for a further period. And interesting enough, in the uh, in, in this budget uh, announcement now, it has been further extended. But not only that, they've even increased the the, the allocation of what your uh, companies are able to claim in terms of the ETI. Um, however. In practice, we find that not all the businesses actually take that up because there are certain compliance requirements for you to be able to um, um, sort of like exploit those mm. tax incentives. And I suppose it also comes down to some sort of a cost benefit analysis. What is going to be the requirement for me to uh, comply and enjoy this incentive? Uh, and weighing that up with having to hire young people, which will more will require more resources, training and upskilling and so forth. And I think coming out of a pandemic when businesses really have had to tighten their belts, um, you know, it, it's another one of those where is it really going to be effective? Are we going to see more of an uptake? And as you say, it's not new, yes. um, but I suppose they are trying to make it more attractive. Um. I, I think they've got a big challenge on making this attractive and actually getting businesses to, to, to take it up. Like you mm -hmm. rightfully say, uh, th there are certain hidden costs of hiring uh, young, uh, inexperienced people because there is a cost to training. Mm -hmm. It might not be absolute monetary, but uh, there is a hidden, hidden, hidden cost to it. And I think businesses will be weighing the, the incentive itself that mm -hmm. they're getting in terms of the ETI versus the hidden cost of actually having to train uh, these young people from scratch. Mm. And yeah. you think of that in terms of the youth unemployment rate, <laughs> paints a bit of a scary picture, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Yes. Um, what are some of the incentives that we should probably have a look at and really see where the opportunity is before they reach that sunset date? What are some of the attractive ones that businesses maybe are not aware of? Mm. 